levels look okay? They're actually coming in? Yeah, levels are actually coming Ooh, in. Hey. hey! Day two is a much better start than day one. We are live. Welcome back to the 2017 Canadian Junior Championships. I'm Jake Shuknick and I'm joined by Daryl Fitzgerald again today. How are you doing, Daryl? I'm doing pretty good, Jake, and good morning to everybody watching. We have Mason Boyd from Saskatchewan against Ben Van Stein on our feature rink today. There was a, uh, a long, grueling day for these guys yesterday. They played four rounds in the hot East Coast sun. I know there were a bunch of tired competitors yesterday, but they look uh, eager and ready to go this morning. Should be for s should make for some really good games this morning. As always, if you want up-to-date results, standings, scores, head over to BullsCanada.com. Go to the Junior and Under 25 Championship webpage. And don't forget to keep in touch with us uh, at BCB Bulls on Twitter, at uh, Canadian Boulder on Twitter as well. And uh, feel free to send in your questions, comments, or anything that you're thinking about, and uh, we'll be happy to discuss it, give some shout-outs, and uh, hopefully answer some questions if you have them. That's right. I've got, uh, I've got Facebook and Twitter opened up here. So uh, on Facebook, we're Bulls Canada Bowling Grant. I think our Facebook handle, if I've got the terminology right, is... Official Bulls Canada, official BCB, something like that. Come on, get over. At BCB official. Looking at the scoreboard yesterday, Mason Boyd went one and two, and Ben Van Stein went two and one. So these two are right in the middle of the pack of their pool. Today is moving day. You never know who's going to climb up the scoreboard and who's going to who's going to move down. Um, lots of stuff to, to shake up as we go along. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at rink one here. Mason has the black bulls. They've got green Saskatchewan stickers. And Ben has the blue and yellow. What do you call that? Blue. Um, yeah, blue with yellow speckles. Blue and, s blue and yellow specks. Been looking for that conversion shot here. Just gonna slide by. Just sliding through, but that that helps. Might have cut him down to two. Let's we'll see what the official score is. Mason Boyd pulls out of the Regina Long Bowling Club, and Ben Van Stein pulls out of the Coburg Long Bowling Club. Taking two out, and I think, I think Ben only likes two. That's it. We also have Priscilla Westlake from BC sitting beside us here, so if you have any questions for Priscilla, feel free to message us on Facebook or Twitter, and we'll get her your answers. It was an absolute beautiful morning here in Nova Scotia. It's not too hot, at least not yet. Not yet. And uh, the sun is shining. I want to give a big thanks to Ron Cameron and his Empire crew for uh, putting in long hours yesterday, and it'll be a long week for them, I'm sure. So big hats off to them for, for being here all week. So I've got Priscilla on the mic with me. How's uh, how's your BC crew doing so far after day one? I think we brought a pretty strong BC contingent this year. Um, they did pretty well yesterday. A lot of them got up two in, um, two games yesterday. Um, the boys played four games and the girls played two. So um, it's pretty pretty strong strong first day for BC, I'd say. And hopefully we're gonna go for another another one today, day two of the competition. 
BC does have, uh, I think, the second most players here. I think Ontario has a couple more, and then BC is right behind in terms of quantity. Interesting that uh, Mason's stretched it out. They're playing a longer end here this way. Great pull there by Mason. Big thanks to our sponsors and partners. We get a lot of funding from the Government of Canada through Sport Canada, uh, Coaching Association of Canada, uh, Kukri, our official clothing supplier. We have MVP Sports is a huge supporter of the junior program and have been for many years. Big thanks to Dan and Brenda. And new this year, we also have LawnBowlingManager.com. If, uh, if your club's looking for a website or a database or or a new management system, I would strongly recommend looking at LawnBowlingManager.com. It's a great online tool that can really really boost your club and make things a little more efficient, a little easier to, to manage. Oh, great effort there by Ben. One bowl each left. Mason's lying two, looking to make it three, but I don't think he's there. Coming up a couple feet short, don't know if that's in the count. <laughs> John Seitman's listening in, and he says Nova Scotia's close with 11 between juniors and under 25s. Yeah, Nova Scotia does have a good showing this year, being in, being held in Nova Scotia, of course. Ben's last bowl here, he's playing a little bit of weight, and he's got one. You can see next door on rink two is Owen Kirby from Ontario against Trevor Burrell from BC. Trevor's gotten off to a 3-0 start. Yep, he picked up two in the first end and one in the second end. Good eye, good eye. Yeah, they, they're not up keeping their scoreboard, so I don't know how many that was there for... Mason. I'm going to go on a limb and assume one, but it could have been two. in the Dartmouth area in Nova Scotia, come on down. We're here all week. We have today and tomorrow left of the under-18s, followed by the Forster Lang pairs on is that Thursday or Friday? Friday, Friday. I guess. Friday. And then the under-25, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Got a full packed summer lined up. We have the Canadian Lawn Bowling Championships starting in a couple weeks out in Victoria from August thir Four. 13 to 19. That's right. We'll be live streaming that as well. After that, we have the Senior Triples in Peterborough, Ontario from the 24th to the 30th of August. And then we have the Outdoor Singles September 4 to 9 in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And we'll be live streaming that as well. Followed by mixed pairs in Point Claire, Quebec from September 14 to 19. And finally, the indoor, Canadian indoor championships at the Pacific Indoor Bulls Club in Vancouver, BC. Whoop, that's my home club. <laughs> I believe that's October 29th to November 4th. 
or something like that. Your home club's PIBC? Yep, so my outdoor club is Tawasa Lawn Bowling Club and uh, okay. my indoor club is PIBC. Yep. Ben just made a great shot there a couple couple bowls ago. Looking to crack the goose egg and get on the scoreboard. Yep, he's been playing a bit of weight um, these first three ends and that one he, he's been missing just a tiny bit and uh, that one he got um, made a big conversion there to be sitting two there. Just punched out the shot bowl of uh, Mason Boyd's for two and here he snuck in a third I think. Based, based on his body language there he didn't really like that last bowl but it's, it's in the count. Mason's inside. Looking for that port between the two front bowls there I think. Ben has last bowl here and he's holding three so a nice little draw in there and he'll pick up a perfect end. Mm-hmm give him the lead. This will be a big point swing for Ben. He's uh, hasn't managed to get on the scoreboard quite yet. So is that a pen he's got in his mouth? I think it's a stir stick, stir like stick? A Interesting. one of those plastic coffee stir sticks. <laughs> Something to chew on. There we go, Bob and I nerves. think he's made the shot he wanted to. Might be good. Little rub off his front short bowl. And, uh, yep, that one's in the count, looks like. Now, depending on whether Mason picked up a 2 or a 1 in the second mm -hmm. end, it may be a tie game 4 4, or Ben might have just taken the lead at 4 3. Yeah, hopefully, the uh, marker will update the score on his way back down. Mason's kicked out three. He's taking a good look at the fourth one there. Not measuring, so I think they agreed on four, would be my guess. <laughs> we got Daryl. Harassing the marker to see if we can uh, get the scoreboard updated. Over on rink two, Trevor Burrell picked up another one to give a 4 nothing lead over Owen Kirby from Ontario. Trevor was our um, BC Boys Provincial Gold Medalist. Oh, was he? Yep. Must say, I quite enjoy his hat. Looks good. <laughs> yes. A little bit of a 1930s throwback. <laughs> he might be one of the younger ones here this week. I'm not. I, I'm not so sure on his age actually. Yeah, and it is four three. So. Uh, all right, so Ben Van Stein did uh, pick up the lead there. I'm impressed with our uh, score guessing. We're actually, actually accurate. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let us know. Reach out to us on Twitter at BCB Bowls or on Facebook at BCB Official. And as always, head over to our website, BullsCanada.com, for scores, standings, results. After each round, we have Brenda updating the score to keep it up to the minute. Uh, over on rink two with uh, Trevor and Owen. Trevor was just sitting three, and I think Owen just drew for shot there. So there. Trevor's having a good look, good look at the head there to see what he see what he needs to do. We have Daryl Fitzgerald back with us now. I'm sure everybody missed my voice. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Good shot there by Ben. Tucking one in nice and close. Ben's been finding his center lines really, really well. Uh, he's adjusted on his weight now too, so zoning in there a bit. 
just coming up a little short. Trevor Burrell of BC just made a huge conversion shot, pushed out Owen Kirby's uh, shot bowl and to make it, uh, it's counting maybe back to three, maybe four, if included his last bowl in there. Fence on the back bowl. what Mason has here to convert this shot. It's kind of a little extra weight. Just clipping this front short bowl. Looks like two to Ben. Which would make the score 6-3. scoreboard updated as we speak. Perfect. Two. Two for Ben. Six three. Let a medium like Jack. Seems to be where both of them like to play it. John wants to know Brady, Campbell versus Jake. Masterson, Braden's up seven. And for one of our viewers, John Seitman, he wanted to know the score between uh Campbell of Masterson and uh, Braden is currently up 7 nothing. Nice shot here by Mason to tuck one in about a foot behind the jack. Looks like a very good bowl here by Ben. Might be the shot. A little short. It's definitely worth a look. What's the count? Ben Van Stein just asking the marker what the count is. There's a marker indicating it is a, a measure. Ben likes the look of this. He's chasing it down. Ooh. And he has made it not a measure anymore, I don't think. No, I think he's just solidified himself with a shot. Here comes Mason with the answer. It's close. Yeah, Mason's looks like he's drawn the shot from Ben's reaction there and giving him a couple claps. Mason Boy's bowls are actually in a pretty good spot for the hand that Ben Van Stein's been bowling on his forehand there. Right. It's a nice little pocket if that jack does happen to trickle over. See if Ben continues with that hand or if he if he decides to swap over. Yeah. Try to drag it towards his own. Looks like he's changed to his backhand. Yeah. It's probably a bit, a lot more positive for him. Jack movement or just a clean draw. He's playing a little bit of weight. He needs to sit that shot bowl and he has. There you go. There you go. Currently holding 
two uh, from the looks of it. If Mason can draw another nice one. He's very close. He needs to edge that shot pole, and he might have done it. Let's see. Good end by these boys. Yeah, lots of conversion shots. Good strategy. Looks like Ben picked up one. Mm -hmm. On ring two, um, Trevor picked up another one. So now the score is currently nine, nine nothing against Owen Kirby of Ontario. Masterson and Campbell game. Uh, pretty sure Masterson picked up a two, so it's seven two over there now. Just coming up a little bit short on that opening shot. Between Mike Fraser and um, Eric Galpo of Ontario over there on a uh, rink six, I believe it's uh, five four for f for Fraser. Then just by a little extra weight, go back to the tee. Just trying to crawl around the zone. Pretty good shot there. I think Mason's holding two here. Ben's chasing after this one. Seems to like it. Just sliding by. and add into his collection on the on the right side there. Currently holding three. Big bowl here for Ben Van Stein. He needs to draw cold to cut this down or if he wants to play the same weight or similar weight he's, he has his last two bowls, he needs to have solid contact uh, with the jack there to move it back to his other two. See what he does here. Looks to cut down the weight. And he may have just drawn shot. It's a good answer for being down three. With Van Stein being 7-3 up on the scoreboard, this bowl here is a really big bowl for Mason Boyd. Needs to make sure he scores this end. Mm. Flipped his nearest bowl just to one roll back. Marker looking at it now. I was thinking, Daryl, that uh, Mason might have just wanted to convert that blue shot bowl, sit for four. That could have been an option. Definitely. Might have had that uh, thought of if he actually dragged that jack back to those two. He didn't want to do that. So So he's playing a bit more conservative there. 
yeah, just try Don't to blame him. Edge off his own, bump one of his up, or even draw it cold. He had the weight down pretty well. It's worth a measure. John Seitman's asking for an update on Liam Campbell versus Xavier Stanier, and Xavier's up 7-2 right now. Priscilla, your voice has gotten really low. <laughs> Everybody's back on with the two best-looking... <laughs> commentators on the Bulls world, Jake Shucknick and, uh, and Daryl Fitzgerald. And I didn't have this yesterday, but I am now going to ask my question of the game. Uh, which province has won the most junior championships since 1996? That's a good question. Give us your guesses. Send us a tweet. Send us a message on Facebook. 1996 until 2016. I guess that's what, 20, 21 years? Yeah, that's quite some time. Mm hmm. Provincial pride's on the line here. It is, it is. Any guesses? Interesting. Priscilla's guessing Ontario. Yeah. I'd go with Ontario as well. I'll just go with percentages. Interesting. We had guys like Jake Shucknick playing, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be pretty good. Yeah. I, I only had two. <laughs> it's 21 years worth. That's right. And uh, I am actually looking for both boys and girls here. So take that into account. Bonus points if you can tell me how many for each. How many boys, how many girls? I'm going with the fact that back home in Ontario, I've been able, I've been fortunate enough to play with former junior champions mm -hmm. uh, from our province, uh, which kind of gives me an inkling that uh, Ontario may have quite a few, but I won't be surprised. There's some really talented bowlers that have come through the ranks from every province, so it's... Owen Kirby, picking up that mat. It's on, it's on the board. Picked up a three, massive three. Well, if you can hear Priscilla jumping up and down, she's watching the uh, BC Ontario game on green <laughs> number two. Uh, Owen Kirby and uh, Trevor Burrell, and Owen Kirby finally got on the board with a big three, so it's now 10 3. Got a message from John Seitman cheer chipping in for uh, what his guess is for most junior championships. He says Ontario has won the most boys and BC the most girls overall. BC, he thinks, has a slight edge. That's interesting. Interesting. So he's going with overall BC. So we've got two Ontario and one BC. In the official vote count right now. Looks like Ben might have picked up a two, possibly a three. Yeah, they're taking a look. Taking a look at that third bowl. From here, I'd say that's a three, and I think he kicked it in. It could be a big swing for Ben there. Pick up a huge end. Whew, Carter Watson down on rink eight. Just had all four within a mat length. That's a 
Good showing. He had a real good game last night against Eric Gallopo from Ontario. They were the last round to be playing. They might not be able to tell from the camera, but uh, I believe Ben's got a coffee stir that he's chewing on, and it's getting quite a workout this game, so... <laughs> uh, you can tell that this game means a lot to him. I know he's looking for a win to, to climb up those standings. I wonder if when he gets older he'll switch to a toothpick. Yeah, uh, maybe. And just, you know, have that <laughs> hanging out of his mouth <laughs> as he's playing. And just throwing one a little deep, closer to the spot, the respot. I haven't had the chance to roll any bowls on this carpet yet, but it does look nice. I'll have to keep the cameras on and let you throw it. <laughs> Could be interesting. Interesting's a good word for it. <laughs> good word. It's also interesting that they're playing this direction. Um, I don't know if you can see on the green, but you can kind of see the seams. About a foot to the right of the jack there is one of the seams that runs the same direction as the bowls are going. Quite often when you have an artificial, you choose not to bowl this way in case hit a seam and then you're just stuck. But so far I don't think I've seen that happen on this rink. No, yeah. so far the the draws have been looking pretty good. They've both been able to get them close. Ben looks like to be holding one right now. Looking to add to that. He's chasing this bull down. He looks a little tight to me. Let's hold him. Uh, that's definitely number one. Yeah, that's number one, yeah. Ben's holding two. In a game to 18 points, things can swing so fast. First couple ends, I thought Mason was all over it. And looking at the score scoreboard now, Ben's up 11-3. Great Ben's bull there from Mason. Ben's made some timely conversion shots. Um, playing a little weight in a few ends and uh, has finally found his draw weight. Looking around the rinks, we got Trevor Burrell up 10 3 over Owen Kirby. I think they're updating that scoreboard. Owen might be at 4 now. Nicholas Terrace is up 8 6 over Caden Capstick. Xavier Stanier is up 7-3 over Liam Campbell. Eric Gallopo and Michael Fraser are all tied up at 6. Braden Campbell's up 11-3 over Jake Masterson. And down on rank 8, looks like Carter Watson is up 6-4. Mason Boyd just drew the shot looks like. Oh, I forgot about rank 5. Jason Valchar is up 9-2. Over one of the Hargreave brothers. Was that just a 1 for Mason? Yes. That puts him down seven in the match. Eleven four. He's got the mat back at the at the tee pretty much, so he's not bringing it up to try to change lengths. Let's see if they play the mid length jack again. That seems to be a popular choice. Looks a little shorter this time. Yeah, a little bit shorter. See if this change of length uh, goes in Mason's favor. What's interesting at this club is that they don't just have hog lines; they also have bowl lines, which um, is the minimum length your bowl needs to go. I don't know how many meters that is; it might be 11 meters or whatever the official ruling is. But I find that quite interesting that they they have that on the 
on the sidelines so you can tell if a bull has gone the minimum distance to be legal or not. I don't think I've seen that at any other club. No, I've never seen it myself. And uh, I think we were chatting earlier, and there's only once that I've personally asked for a bull to be measured for being ultra short. <laughs> but uh, I've never actually seen it in any other circumstance. It's usually a rare occurrence. Either it's a really big mistake or someone's really trying to get in your head with a... Super short guard. Super short guard, yeah. Mason just kissed off his first ball, I think. And, and that was shot, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Priscilla just noted that side seems to hang a bit. Doesn't really come back as as nice as you would like. Both players are playing that side. So whether that's to their benefit or or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't really come back a whole lot either. Let's see what Ben does here. Both sides are open, so... Yeah, it is a wide open draw on the other hand, too, but... They're sticking with their forehands. Okay. And sticking with his routine of chasing his third ball, see if this makes a difference. Great ball by Ben. Push it out and sit for shot. See if Mason has the answer to that. We got a good luck tweet. Good luck, Nicholas, Liam, and Braden. Go Bridgetown. From Nicole. Glad to hear there's a few local Nova Scotians tuning in. He's taking a good look at it. Currently holding one. Look for two. He wants to get a two or three to try to take a commanding lead in this game. Mm-hmm. That ever-elusive 18, you want to get there as soon as you can. He's watching this bowl intently. It looks like a better line. If he's there. It's hard to tell from this angle. Great line. If, he, if he's there, that could be too. with a look for three, maybe? He must be pretty confident. He's already writing down the score as he's walking down the green. <laughs> it's two out. That's a definite two. Looking for three. Yeah. You kicked it in for three? It looks like three. Makes it 14-4. Big end for Ben there to push his lead even further. Mm, yeah, Owen Kirby struggling a little bit last end. He's now down 13 4 against Trevor Burrell. Ben sending. A shorter jack this time. We'll ask this, ask this question again. Which province has won the most junior championships since 1996? I've got Harriet Petuli standing behind me. Maybe she'll know the answer to... It does. I only have records back to 96, though. Yeah. Easily accessible. Yeah. It was up to 25 then at that time, so... Mm -hmm. Any guesses on which province has won the most? Oh, no. I know Martin Halster was, the, the, I think, the first man that won. Sherry Seidel. She was, she won it for the couple first couple years, so that there was that was mm -hmm. a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Those kids are now in their forties. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say this because I'm biased, but 
And Priscilla would like to say BC, but she's still thinking Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> Go VC, yeah. <laughs> Both bowlers still having a little struggle on this on this ditch side, on this rink. Everything's holding out. Harriet finally gave me an answer, and she's thinking BC as well. Oh, two Ontario, two BC. Yeah. Anybody else going to have any more guesses? Any more guesses? Send us a tweet. Send us a message on Facebook. <laughs> right, the, the both players are still favoring the uh, the ditch side, even though it hangs. So it's been an interesting couple couple ends where Mason just keeps rolling them and they keep hanging out there. That that is interesting because normally if you're favoring your for or if you feel confident on the forehand, you play the forehand both directions. But I guess they just like this side. Oh, and Kirby threw a drive there on rink two. I think he just missed. It just hit the front. Hit the uh, front. The crashed front on the front. Ball, yeah. Looks like Trevor's holding two. That would give him a 15-4 advantage. It could be that both these players, since they've been playing this ditch side, that they're scared to switch hands this late in the game. If you don't know your line at this point, you don't really want to be guessing. But based off of the way that side hangs... They're all gathering into that one spot. But uh, it's been working in Ben's favor, so there's no reason for him to switch yet. But we'll see if Mason made the adjustment come in. Just I through the port. Found the center line. Just a little extra yeah, weight. Finally found the line. And that looks like that could be two or three for uh, for Ben. Sorry. Ah, there we go. Could just be a tricky rink. He's kicked out three already. Looking at that fourth. And they're measuring for four. This could be the game if Ben gets it. Double checking to see which one is Mason's closest. And I think they've already found it, yeah. Moment of judgment. I don't think so. Well, they're calling an umpire. It's probably a good idea from Mason when the game is on the line. You don't want to be giving that away. an interesting turn of events uh, considering Mason jumped off the lead on the first three ends of the game and then Ben just came right back. Mm -hmm. So Earlier in this end um, Mason did have a, a bowl there in the head but, but it was clipped out by Ben Van Stein uh, to make it three and then Ben drew again. So. Definitely interesting to see what the result of this will be. Mm -hmm. Umpires are probably a little sore today after putting in a 12 or 13 hour day yesterday. Over on rink two, it looks like Owen Kirby is line one at the moment. He's coming down to take a look. Big shout out to Anne Marie Seitman, Lena Cameron, and the rest of the host organizing committee for doing a great job in putting this together. Anne Marie's been to many a uh, championship with 
the juniors lately, so she knows what to what to improve upon, what to look for, and I think she's done a bang up job. Fantastic. I heard another player calling for an umpire for a jack measure, but with only three of them, two of them are already already busy. And um, that's the game. That's, that is the game, yep. Ben Van Stein with the win, 18 to 4. Might be, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, assuming that the camera's okay, we can actually still see rink two and we can just keep on trucking and uh, showcase Owen Kirby from Ontario versus Trevor Burrell from BC. Owen has the green bowls and Trevor has the orange ones. Owen's currently lying one, looking to make it two, and he just crashed on his short bowl there in front. Taking a look, but I think it's just one. That makes it 15-5 now for Trevor. <laughs> and Owen's looking to change things up. He's brought the mat up maybe 6 or 10 feet short of the hog line. And great jack throw there. Perfect length. Jack's on the two meter mark there, and Marie Seitman, their marker, just stepping up onto the bank. That's a smart thing to do, to be off the green. Looks like Owen has pretty good weight there. Hey, we have Rob Gallipo. Shout out to Eric Gallipo, and he thinks BC won the most nationals. Woot woot, go BC! <laughs> <laughs> Traitor, says Daryl. Ontario resident cheering on BC here. Hey now. I think uh, with uh, maybe I'm going to change my vote too as well. Changing to BC? Yeah. Great pull there from Trevor. We'll try to turn the mics up to make sure you guys can hear us. So if Priscilla changes her vote, then I think that's, what, four votes for BC? Oh. Well, I'm oh, just oh, thinking how eight. Harriet oh. sounded pretty convincing when she she put in her vote. She she thought it was BC because uh, the first, I think the first few juniors uh, that one I think Sher Sherry Siddell was in in that mix. So mm -hmm. there's two Canadian titles, two Canadian junior titles to Sherry Siddell there of BC. Um, and then I really hope Ontario wins. So. <laughs> then I've had a couple wins uh, myself. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple. A couple. Yeah, you had two. <laughs> Owen threw a drive and he's throwing another one. And he just missed again. I 
I'm thinking maybe Caitlin Briarly of BC also won one or two Canadian Junior titles. Yeah, Caitlin Briarly won two. Yep. I guess now that our feature match is done and we're on to the second match, I can probably start looking to reveal a few answers. I know, uh, shout out to Sterling Wood from Ontario. She won a, the 2012 Canadian Junior National title for the girls when it was held in Kelowna, BC. Um, and uh, she beat me in that, that match. So I do know uh, there's one one extra win there for Ontario. And mm -hmm. Jake, you yourself have won a couple times this Yeah, well. I won it, won it twice. Yep. It was kind of a trick question. The answer is BC and Ontario are tied. Oh, at, no. At 16 each. <laughs> BC has 12 women and 4 men. Ontario has 6 women and 10 men for titles. So BC has won it more time for the women, but Ontario has won it more time for the men. Bit of a trick question. I think I get bonus points because I decided both. <laughs> 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 and I guess that was a three there for Trevor on that last end to to win the match. I don't think we can quite reach rank three. I'm not sure how long before the girls will start playing. based off the schedule. Temporarily set to start at 10.30 and it's only, what, 9.36 here? We'll see how long before they get back out. If it's more than a few minutes, we might uh, might shut down for a few minutes. I think they're going to be taking a bit of a break here before the girls go out. They might be waiting for all the boys to finish. So we might shut it down for now. And we'll be back up in 10, 15, 20 minutes, depending how long they take to get going. <laughs> okay, P signing out. Bye, guys. All right, we'll see you in a few minutes.